Hello and welcome to the Terry White Tech Blog. Today we're here to take a look at how to use Periscope. Now, if you're watching this video, I assume it's either because you're brand new to Periscope or you haven't even tried it yet and you kind of want to see what it's all about. Maybe you heard friends talk about it, you've seen it on social media, you've had me ask you to follow me, so forth and so on. Uh, so let me explain a little bit about what Periscope is first and then we'll dive right in, show how to use it, and we may even get a live broadcast under our belt uh, to try and uh, show you the full process. Uh, so first and foremost, Periscope is live broadcasting from a smartphone. So if you're on an iPhone or an Android smartphone, you can download Periscope free of charge from your respective app store. Uh, once you download it, you can set up a new account. Or if you're on Twitter, because it's a Twitter-owned company, you can just log in with your existing Twitter ID, which is what I'll be doing today. Uh, once you're logged in, you can follow people. So it's very similar to Twitter in that respect. You can follow people. You don't have to ask them first, like on, on Facebook. You just follow them and uh, people can follow you. The more people that follow you when you go live to broadcast, the more people that will get notified that you're live and can watch your broadcast. Okay, so that's kind of how it works in a nutshell. It's using the uh, cameras on your smartphone, either the front-facing or the rear-facing camera. It defaults to the rear-facing one. Because uh, it was originally positioned as something to allow people to see or show people the world around them. So if I'm looking at a cool waterfall or nature scene or a, a, a sporting activity or something like right in front of me, I can just live uh, periscope it and people can uh, watch and hear. Now... People can also interact with you. They can type in comments. You can see the comments in your live feed. They can also just, they don't have to type anything. They can just tap on their screen anywhere on the broadcast and you will see a stream of hearts. So if I tap one time, I get one heart. If I tap three times, you get three hearts. Uh, each person as of this recording can leave up to um, 500 hearts per broadcast. So that's the way Periscope works and that's the way it was designed to work. Uh, now, with that in mind, um, there are some tips and tricks and, and ways to get started. So rather than me explain it all and then show it, why don't I just show it and explain it along the way? So I've got my uh, iPhone 6 Plus here. I've logged out of Periscope uh, just so we start the experience from scratch because this is a how-to video. And I'm going to go ahead and launch the Periscope app. And of course, the first thing it's asking me to do is log in with Twitter. Now, you, I said you can create an account because um, if you don't have a Twitter account, then you would create one. But since it sees my phone has Twitter on it and I've created a Twitter account in the OS, it assumes I would want to just log in with Twitter or my phone number. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with Twitter. It pops up my Twitter ID at the top there, uh, which is Terry L. White. And then once I log in, I will see recent broadcast of people that I follow or people that I follow that have shared broadcast. Now at the very top, uh, that, that broadcast is not someone I follow, but you'll notice on the right hand side it says featured. That's because Periscope will sometimes feature a broadcast and they'll sometimes feature people to follow. So at the very top, it will usually be a featured one, kind of like an advertisement. Hey, go watch this. We want you to watch this. But everything below will be the ones you follow. Now, you may not have anything there yet because you just started. So if you're not following anyone, you probably won't see any recent broadcasts unless they are, in fact, featured. At the very top, it says no, one's, no one I'm following is live right now. If they were live, and someone could go live certainly during this, broad, this um, recording, uh, their video would, or the, a screenshot of their video would pop up and I can tap and watch it if I want to. Even if I wasn't in the app, I would get a push notification telling me that, you know, so-and-so that I follow is now gone live and it would show me the name of their broadcast. And if I want to watch it right then and there, I can. Now, these ones that are recent, of course, aren't live anymore. They've already happened and it shows on the right-hand column how many hours ago it happened. Uh, so if I scroll down, um, I follow a guy named Scott Williams. He broadcasts quite a bit. And you'll notice that he, he did quite a few broadcasts last night. And if I scroll down some more, I'll see some other people. And if I scroll down far enough, I might even see one that I did yesterday. So uh, I did one yesterday, first broadcast in Landscape Wide View. Because as of yesterday, Periscope updated their app with 
landscape orientation. And that was the big update I was waiting for. That's why I held off doing this video because portrait mode is just not great for video. We love watching, your, your TVs are wide, your, your computer displays are wide because your vision, your, your, your view of the world is wide. So, I, you know, as a philosophical thing, I just didn't like Periscope's portrait view. But now that they've gone wide, it's time to show the world how Periscope works. All right, so uh, obviously recent broadcast, but you notice it uh, only goes down 23 hours um, ago. That's because your broadcast is available for replay by anyone who wants to follow you or comes to your account uh, or you share the link for only up to 24 hours. After 24 hours, those uh, like when this one hits 24 hours at the bottom, it'll just disappear because your broadcast will automatically just self-destruct. It will go away. So the broadcasts are there for 24 hours. Now, if you if you did something really cool and you kind of say, no, don't go away, I want to save this, uh, there is a setting in the preferences to have it at least save the video to your camera roll that you that you recorded. So that way you have the video on your device, but you don't have the comments, you don't have the hearts, you don't have any of that. Uh, you just have the video and the voice, uh, or the audio, I should say. All right, so with that said, let's take a quick tour of the app, and then we'll uh, jump in and do a broadcast. So we're on the very first icon on the bottom, which is uh, my recents. Now you'll notice on the, the second icon is like a world map or a globe. If I tap on this, this is pretty cool. This was added recently in Periscope. And uh, by the way, when I say something's been added or if I show you something that you may not have, uh, especially if you're on Android, it's only because the iOS version came out first and got a head start. So uh, there will be features sometimes that are in the iOS version that haven't quite yet made it to the Android version yet. So if I show something that's not in your version, don't worry, it will be in your version. It may be in your version by the time you watch this, so don't have to worry about it. But the world map is just that. It's a glo or a global view of who's periscoping and where. So even if I'm not following anyone or I don't want to watch anyone that I'm following or no one I'm following is live, I can zoom in in any particular area of the world and see who's live at any given time. So I'm in Atlanta right now, and if I go to Atlanta, I can see if anyone's live there and if they're broadcasting. So no one in Atlanta is going to be broadcasting except for me soon. But up in Louisville, Kentucky, there are two people broadcasting, I think. Oh, no, I'm sorry, that red dot does mean someone's broadcasting. Let's tap and see. Uh, so there's a 9-11 community prayer service going on. So you just tap the dot and you can see what it is. And if you want, and you can see how many people are watching it. There are five people watching that one right now. If I tap on it, it'll just start playing. And I can I can view whatever's going on around the globe 24 hours a day on Periscope and just watch. So I love the map feature and you can also do it as a list and you can just scroll through the list. And to me, that's nowhere near as exciting as going to a specific geographic location and seeing what's going on. So if I go across the world, go across the pond, as they say, I can see what's going on in Europe. I can see who's broadcasting there. Lots of people broadcasting in Europe and France, so forth and so on. So Periscope from a global view is very cool. Um, next icon is your actual broadcasting icon. This is where you would go to start your broadcast. So it's showing um, my rear camera right now. I'm going to tilt it down a little bit because I'm going to turn that in a minute. Um, but the next thing is, is, is asking me a question, and this is where most beginners mess up, or not mess up, but they just don't know. That cursor flashing that says, what are you seeing now? That's where you type in the title of your broadcast. Here, let me show you an example. Let me get out of this for, for a minute, and let me go back to my list of broadcasts, because I saw one there a minute ago. And you'll notice that Keith Dixon, uh, that's a guy I know, he's a, a great fan of mine, but anyway... Uh, Keith Dixon is untitled, and that's because Keith probably went live for the first time and just didn't realize that's where you type in your title, and so whenever we see untitled, we kind of, you know, chuckle a little bit because we know that's a newbie, that's a new person that just started broadcasting, and they didn't put a title in. Now, if you don't title it, you're probably lessening the chance that someone's going to watch it because we have no idea what Keith's talking about, so unless you knew him you probably would never click on that or tap on that because you just wouldn't know. 
Uh, okay, so it's very important to put a title in and make your title fun. Make it descriptive. Make it something that's going to pull people in. Uh, a guy I follow, his name Scott Williams, he also um, has a tip as far as uh, use emojis. A lot of people will use emojis when they're texting, um, but emojis draw attention to titles over just generic text titles. So if you use emojis, your title will catch the eye of more people because they'll just try and figure out what the symbols are, and, and then they'll read the text and try and see what the symbols relate to. All right, so type your title in. Then there are four icons above the start broadcast. The first one that's kind of pulsing, that one is my location. That means that if I broadcast with that on, and it's on right now because it's white, that means that it will say, Terry White, whatever my title, whatever the title of the broadcast is, in Atlanta. So it'll also show up on the map. If I'm trying to be incognito, I'm broadcasting from somewhere I don't want anyone to know where I am, even the geographic location, I can turn that off and it will just say the name of my broadcast and it won't be on the map because it won't know where I, where I am. Uh, so it, that is okay to leave on. I leave it on because it's not pinpointing exactly where you are. It's just saying, hey, I'm in Atlanta. I could be anywhere in Atlanta or in the Atlanta area. Uh, when it first came out, though, just as a bit of trivia, it was very precise, like down to your doorstep. So people were showing up at people's places that were periscoping. And, of course, Periscope had to quickly change that. All right, the second icon is kind of cool, although, for me, it doesn't work. Uh, this is a private broadcast. That means I want to only broadcast to the people I tap on. So if I want to broadcast to 10 of my friends, I would tap those 10 names start the broadcast, and th only those 10 people would get the notification. Only those 10 people would be able to watch. No one else would see it. No one else would know that I'm broadcasting, so it's pretty cool. Kind of almost like a one-to-many FaceTime where, or, where I'm showing my, what's going on, but only to the people I know. Now, the reason I say that doesn't work, even in this latest update, is because it does not list all my followers, meaning I type in, even search for specific names. They never come up because I think it's just a limit on it. So it seems to only show my recent followers, not all of my followers. So hopefully that will get fixed for you know for uh, people that have a lot of followers, but I've yet to be able to use that because every single name I type in never comes up, even though I know they're following me. All right, uh, so hopefully that'll, that'll work someday. The next icon is kind of interesting. If you turn this on, it kind of keeps down uh, what I like to call trolling. People that want to just jump on your broadcast, they don't know you, they just saw you on the map somewhere, and they just want to get in the comments and advertise or talk about themselves or talk about you or whatever. Uh, so if you turn that icon on, only the people that follow you can type comments. The people that don't follow you can't type comments. So they at least have to follow you first before they'd be able to engage in the comments. I never use that because I'm okay with people uh, typing in comments, even if they're bad comments, because what I'll do, if you type in something that attacks me or is derogatory or you're arguing you know, in a very bad way with someone on the broadcast, I will just simply block you. That's the very, very nice feature that Periscope added is you just tap on the comment, their profile comes up, you tap block, they're boom, they're kicked out of the broadcast and they can never come back. Uh, and they can never come back to your future broadcast. So you have blocked them permanently. So I, you know, and I, I hate to say it, but women that broadcast typically get a lot of abuse because they're women. So guys like to be jerks and they come in and they just start talking a lot of uh, bad things and, and women just quickly block. They don't even think about it. It's like, oh, comment block, done, bye. And everyone watching cheers because you just got that annoying person out of your broadcast. So that's what I love about that. Uh, even though I don't have to worry about, I can make the comments only for people that follow me, but it's just, just as easy to block the person. And that way I don't have to ever, ever worry about them coming back. The last icon, definitely one that you probably want to have on if you do have a Twitter following. And that will uh, tweet the title of your broadcast and the fact that you just went live. So if I uh, leave that on, which I will, and I go live, uh, the people or that follow me on Twitter will just see a tweet that, hey, Terry White's li live on Periscope. Terry White, blah, 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 whatever my, my title is. Um, so very cool to have that because what I've noticed is 
uh, as of this recording, I have over 44,000 followers on Twitter. But I think I only have uh, less than 4,000 or 30-something hundred followers on Periscope. So it's only usually Periscope is a fraction of your Twitter following. Very rarely do I see someone with a huge Twitter following and the equal number on Periscope. And I think it's because Periscope's so new and it's smartphone only for the most part that uh, people just haven't adopted it yet, where people can use Twitter on anything. They can use it in a web browser, so forth and so on. Now, uh, speaking of computers, when you broadcast and someone is at their office, their home, they're on their computer, they see it in the Twitter feed, they can tap on it and watch it in a web browser. So, so Periscope works in a web browser even if the person doesn't touch their phone, doesn't even have a smartphone. The only difference is they won't be able to comment and they won't be able to tap the hearts, at least as of the recording of this video. That may change um, after this video is done. Okay, so I'm going to get out of this for a second to show you the last icon, and then we'll come back and do our broadcast. All right, the last icon. Um, this is kind of, you notice it says people at the top. This is uh, suggesting people to follow, and just like the featured broadcast, Periscope will feature people. So it's featuring this Penguin 6 um, person. Uh, don't know why they're featured, but they're featured. So if you wanted to follow them, you could just tap the little icon to the bottom right. But below that, you see it says following on Twitter. Those are the people I'm following on Twitter that are now on Periscope, meaning they have a Periscope account. And it says, well, since you're following them on Twitter, you might want to follow them on Periscope. Uh, so, for example, at some point, I followed 1-800-Flowers on Twitter. Um, don't know. Maybe I did business with them in the past, I guess. I bought flowers. But I don't really care what they broadcast about, so I uh, probably won't follow them on Periscope. But this is a quick way to see all your friends that you're following. You can scroll the list and then just go in and start following those people. That way, they get a quick following. And also, you'll show up now when you create your account on their people list. If you know a name that you want to type in, you can tap the little magnifying glass in the upper left corner and you could type in something like Terry L. White, find me and follow me on Periscope. That's not an example, that's a request. Okay, there we go. Uh, and your the little man icon or person icon in the upper right corner, tap on it. That will show you your following, your stats, uh, so, for example, I've got, as of this recording, 3,864 followers, but again, that's out of 44,000 Twitter followers, so a small fraction, and uh, 87,000 hearts, and I know people with over a million hearts, so it's relatively small. Um, it shows the number of people I've blocked, so I've blocked 33 people so far, and if I blocked them, it's because they deserve to be blocked. And uh, I've done 99 broadcasts, so you're, you're here for my 100th broadcast that we'll just do in a minute. But getting down to the settings, this is uh, the two important things here. I originally had the users follow you turned off, but I turned that on because I like getting the little notification when someone follows me because I can quickly see who it is. And if it's someone I know because they just got on Periscope, I can quickly follow them right back. Without that being on, they'll just my followers will accumulate, but I'll never know or be notified that they followed me, and I'd have to constantly keep going through the list to see who followed me, and that at, at 3,800, that's just too much right now. Uh, and the last one at the bottom, auto save the broadcast. This is important, and this is the one that saves it to your phone, the video to your phone when you're done. So that way, you've got. Um, the actual video file, audio, not the comments, not the hearts, but it's saved to your camera roll. That way you can do whatever you want with it afterwards. Okay, so that's the quick run through of all the various areas of Periscope. So I'm going to give you a couple tips right off the bat before we get started. Number one, you're going live. So as you know, with any live TV show, uh, there's mishaps that can happen and they will be seen. So for example... Uh, in the upper right corner next to my battery indicator, you notice there's a little moon or half moon. That's because I turn on um, do not disturb, meaning I don't want any pop-ups, any notifications coming up 
for the, not for the necessarily for Periscope, but for just for this video. So if you don't want any annoying drop downs, pop ups, or anything like that, put on Do Not Disturb before your broadcast, and then you can turn it on off afterwards. Um, and uh, silence anything else around you. So if you have, for example, I've got uh, notifications turned on on my computer. Let me go ahead and turn those off right now, just with option clicking up there on the computer as well. Just turning off all notifications. That way I won't be disturbed while I'm live with an audience. All right, next uh, icon, or next thing we're going to do is going to go back to the live broadcast. And we're going to just go ahead and uh, tap. And we'll do a, one more time, we'll paste. Because I... I typed in earlier the name of my broadcast, copied it, and pasted it, or copied it to the clipboard so I could paste it later. I highly encourage you every time you type a title to copy it because if some mishap happens, you get knocked off your Wi-Fi, knocked off your connection, the app quits, uh, you end the broadcast, or someone calls you and the broadcast ends, anything like that, um, You'll be able to quickly go back in and start broadcasting again because you won't have to sit there typing the title in on your small mobile device. You just paste and don't hit start broadcasting and away you go. Now the next tip, so there's two, copy the title. The next tip is start the orientation of the video and keep it in that orientation for the entire broadcast, at least for now. Uh, like I said, the widescreen format just came out yesterday. And while, yes, I can turn it portrait when I need to show something portrait and turn it back landscape, I noticed when people do that, uh, at least as of yesterday, it kind of freaks out some of the followers, some of the people watching, because it doesn't gracefully reset all, every single person's phone. So sometimes you'll end up still broadcasting sideways, even though they're turning their phone. And the only way for them to get you back you know, properly is to leave the broadcast and come back in. So in that respect, um, at least for now, until they get the kinks worked out, maybe a couple of new updates after this, uh, keep it in one orientation for the entire broadcast, at least for now. Uh, maybe once they figure this all out and they you know, patch the bugs, then we can uh, turn our broadcast as needed throughout. Um, I probably won't be broadcasting in portrait very often anymore, so I'm just going to go ahead and rotate my phone right now. And you'll notice that it rotates everything properly. Now, um, you'll also notice that my um, phone is pointed at a keyboard and it's actually a keyboard I'm going to talk about on the broadcast uh, people will start no matter what when you start your broadcast it will start with the rear camera so people will only be able to see what your camera's pointed at and at first glance because in, you can't turn the camera back on you until you um, start the broadcast so at least point it at something interesting so that when you start the broadcast People see something before they before you can flip the camera around on you. Uh, the other tip is that once I start this broadcast, um, you know, people will ask, well, how long should I broadcast for? What's the minimum? I would say the minimum is at least five minutes because you got to remember what happens. You start a broadcast, the tweet goes out. No, push notifications go out. It takes at least a minute or two for people to respond, for people to jump in, for people to come watch your broadcast. And maybe they're pulling into the driveway and they're going to watch the minute they get in the house and it takes them two or three minutes for that to happen. If you're done before they can even start watching, it's not a great experience. So broadcast something that's going to last for at least five minutes, ten minutes maybe, and then that gives people enough time to come in and interact with you. So a lot of broadcasts start off with just hanging out, you know, before you start the topic, talking to people, asking them questions, where are you from? And you'll notice that when you start a broadcast, you don't even have to say a word. People will chime in with their city. I'm in, you know, Paris, France. I'm in, you know, uh, Washington, D.C. I'm in, you know, Louisville, Kentucky. They'll just start typing in states and countries and names just to say, that, just to represent where they're from. But you can play on that. You can ask people, hey, what's your name? Are you new to Periscope? If not, so forth and so on. All right, so um, let's start the broadcast. Let's see how this goes live. Hopefully, I don't have to edit anything out. 
Uh, but it is live, so you never know what would happen. All right, here we go. I'm going to hit the start broadcast button. The keyboard will drop down after I do that. And, uh, and then you'll start to see people hopefully come into the room. So here we go. Hey, what's up, Periscope? What's going on, everybody? How are you on this fine Friday morning? Or Friday afternoon, or Friday evening, depending on where you are in the world. Oh, thanks for the hearts. Love the hearts. Keep the hearts flowing. Hey, Dallas. Good morning. Lynn, how are you? Hey. Hey, Ajna, how are you? Long time no see. So, guys, you are going to be stars on my video. I'm actually recording a video for YouTube right now that's uh, titled, How to Use Periscope. And of course, if you're gonna show someone how to use Periscope, you gotta actually do a Periscope to show them. So, uh, you guys are all stars, so people will actually get to see your, hey, oh my God, all the way from Hong Kong. How are you? Uh, people will get to see your, your handles and hopefully follow you. So, Chime in with your name and your location. Like, you know, I see hi from Brazil, but your name is so small, I can't read it. So uh, just say, you know, for example, uh, John, South Africa, or wh whoever you are, or wherever you're from. So I see Texas, but let me see your name as well. Okay, right. Tom from Boston. How's it going? Uh, Ajna from, U or from Tampa. Hey, YouTube. <laughs> Very cool. Uh Damar from New York City, Joe from Mobile, Alabama, David from Boulder, uh, Th Thomas from Scotland, Chow from Italy, uh, Carl from Chicago, Bill from New York, Guy from Arlington, Texas, hey Illinois, uh, I saw North Georgia but I didn't see the name, went by too fast, Victoria from Atlanta, hey Victoria, uh, Tom and Conyers, Fabio from Italy, all the way from Italy. So guys, you see a keyboard. I'm going to talk about the keyboard in just a minute so I don't waste your time. You get to see something cool. But let me go ahead and flip the camera around just so uh, YouTube can see this. So YouTube, if you double tap your screen, that will uh, that's a shortcut for flipping the camera around. And so let me turn it down a little bit so we can see it on me. And I was told I need to hang out on this side of the screen because you guys see the comments on the other side of the screen. And yes, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So this is pretty cool um, that this is going to be on YouTube and you guys will be a part of it. Um, let's see what's going on. Okay, so some tips right off the bat. First and foremost, uh, one of the tips I gave on YouTube was that, you know, you have to give people time to come into the room. In other words, uh, your, your broadcast needs to be at least five minutes long. Because you got to remember what happens when you press the start broadcast button, uh, people get a tweet, people get a push notification if they're following you, but they may not be able to drop what they're doing right then and there and, and watch. So you got to give people at least a minute or two to come into the room to be able to see what's going on. Uh, the other thing I talked about was, hey, how's it going? The other thing I talked about was, uh, am I on the wrong side? I don't know. Am I on the wrong side? Should I be on this side? You guys keep telling me I'm on the wrong side each time. So uh, to me, this side looks right. But yesterday when I did it, you told me this side looks right. Okay, so no, I'm on the right side. Okay, good. Uh, so uh, the other tip was point your camera at something interesting to start because what will happen is it starts on the rear camera first and then you can flip it around. But, you know, you, if you're pointing at a floor or a wall or something else, uh, then people are going to be weird. So, uh, oh no, no Android update for Landscape yet. I thought it did come out yesterday. That's not good. Hopefully, I thought someone got it. So if you guys uh, check your app stores to make sure you, I know it is on iOS, but on Android, make sure you got the update. So the question was, how do we share on Facebook? So you see down below in the, the little person icon in the bottom right hand corner, if you tap that, it'll swipe the screen to the right. Uh, if you swipe up, then you should see a share icon in the, up, in the new update. There's also a now share on Facebook. 
And very cool, you can also invite your followers. So thank you very much, uh, Guy M. Jenkins, for inviting your followers. And I saw Victoria did it earlier as well. So inviting followers, YouTube. I'm going to turn my face back to YouTube for a second. Uh, and encouraging people to invite their followers is also a good thing because more people will join your broadcast, more people will see who you are, and hopefully get to follow you as well. Back to uh, Periscope. Yes, finally, share on Facebook. But here's the thing, uh, and speaking of tips on, on Periscope, when you share on Facebook, and thanks, by the way, uh, T. Safe, Safe word, photo for, for Photography, and uh, Ajna, thanks for sharing this on Facebook. When you share on Facebook, there's a problem because Facebook lives on and your feed just continues. Well, this will expire after tomorrow, so that link will no longer work. So I kind of like, I have mixed feelings about being able to share on Facebook because right now the broadcast still only lasts 24 hours. And if they're done in 24 hours, then yeah, then they're done. All right. So guys, you want to see something cool? Um, and Ajna, thanks again for sharing on Twitter. Very nice. Uh, so, I, you know, although I'm doing this video for my YouTube channel on how to use Periscope, I thought it would be cool to actually show you guys something as being a part of this. Uh, new, uh, a couple of new pieces of tech that I just got. And I kind of pointed at them at the beginning. Uh, now you'll actually get the chance to see them live. So I'm going to switch the camera back. Hang on, let me turn it uh, up. And let's go back. And here we are. Okay, so two things. Um, number one, here's a, this is for a MacBook. This is for, this is a keyboard co cover, of course. But if I flip it over, you'll actually see that these are the keyboard shortcuts for Lightroom. So basically, if you just lay this down on your keyboard, and you can, of course, use it, you will then get all the keyboard shortcuts for in this particular case, Lightroom. Um, I love this because even as much as I use Lightroom every day, that doesn't necessarily mean I know what the keyboard shortcuts are or there's some that I forget or don't use every day. I know, whoa, that's awesome, right? So who's this one by? This one, uh, you can find out more about this at www.kbcovers.com, keyboardcovers.com. And they make them for different applications. Now, originally, hang on, let me flip this over. Originally, I used to use these. This is by the same company. It's by Editor Keys. or So you can go to www.editorkeys.com. And this one is for Photoshop. But as you notice, this is a real Apple keyboard that they've adopted. Thank you for uh, typing the URL in it for everyone else. That's great. Uh, this is a keyboard that they've actually taken and put the Photoshop keys on it. So they basically customize the keyboard so that you have a keyboard all the time with your keyboard shortcuts on it. Now, the obvious uh, advantage to this is that, you know, it's a real keyboard. It's not a cover. It will feel just as good as typing on any other keyboard, but it's one application. In other words, if you're in Photoshop all day and nothing else, this is what you want. But if you are in multiple, yes, of course, they have other applications as well. But if you're in multiple applications, then this makes more sense because I take the Lightroom and put it on when I'm in Lightroom, take it off, put the Illustrator on, one on when I'm in Illustrator, take it off, put the Photoshop one on when I'm in Photoshop, take it off, so forth and so on. So um, I actually prefer this over the physical keyboard. Maybe, you know, again, if you're only in one application, physical keyboard makes sense. But if you use multiple applications, these covers make sense. They're very good quality. It will also, of course, help keep your, um, your MacBook keyboard clean and crumb free uh, for those of us who like to eat near the keyboard, which I'm guilty of that. So uh, very cool. Keep it, keep it clean and also have all those keyboard shortcuts handy at all times. And there was one that I saw on here that I completely forgot about. And that was this one, the uh, up and down for the star rating. I didn't know about that one. Or maybe I knew years ago and I forgot about it. I knew most of these. Uh, like, for example, I didn't know the Q key was for spot removal. 
uh, that jumps right to spot removal. So yeah, there are a lot of keys that you forget about, and this is a, just glance down at your keyboard, and you'll see what they are. Uh, I knew about that one, like for example, M going to gradient filter in Lightroom, so forth and so on. So, uh, shout out to kbcovers.com and a shout out to uh, editor, editorskeys.com. Same, uh, I believe they're the same company that makes both products. At least they both came from in the same box. So I'm assuming the same uh, company. But check those guys out, see what they offer. See which applications they support. And if I have to pick between the two, I'd go for the cover. Um, yeah, I believe they make both. I'm, yeah, as a matter of fact, I know they make both on the keyboards, and I'm assuming they make both on the uh, covers as well uh, for Mac. And, yes, editorkeys.com. Thank you for editors with an S, by the way. Editorskeys.com. Let me make sure. Yes, editors with an S, keys.com. Is there no pause button in landscape? What do you mean by pause? If you want to get rid of the comments, uh, you can tap the little person icon, swipe over and hide the comments. All right. So uh, cool that you guys got that. So um, as far as tips for Periscope, uh, here's a couple. Uh, I, I know that new people often start out their broadcast with untitled. That's a, a definite newbie uh, <laughs> mistake. So whenever I see so-and-so went live untitled, I always know that that's a brand new person who didn't realize they were supposed to type in a title. Uh, here's a tip I got from Scott Williams, a guy that I follow. And it works because it, it always makes me notice them first. When you type your title in, I know we hate to use them sometimes, but use emojis like the person that just did on the comments. Because when you type in an interesting title, it's just text, so it's it's mixed in with all the other interesting titles. But when you type in an interesting title with emojis, oh, what are those emojis? You're trying to look at them just to see what they are, and therefore you end up reading the uh, actual um, uh, title. Uh, next thing is that, yes, uh, experienced sc scopers forget the title sometimes because they're so anxious to jump on, so uh, unfortunately. Now, here's another one that I use. When you type your title, Select all, copy. Because if something happens during the broadcast and you need to quit, your phone rings, it's important, you got to take the call, and you then uh, need to jump right back in, you don't have to sit there typing the title in again. Paste. You're right back to where you, you left off. And you can even paste and then do part two. So select all and copy. That's a great uh, tip for those that broadcast all the time. Now, since I brought, I usually dual broadcast to both Periscope and Facebook. I'm not doing it this time because I'm going to actually put this video on Facebook. But uh, a tip that I use is in the OS Notes app, I type my title. And that way, the notes sync to both devices. So that way, I can copy it and paste it on each device without having to type it again on each device. Because the notes sync on uh, iCloud. So that way, my, uh, and so you could use Evernote for the same thing. Uh, no, there's no actual pause. Uh, uh, sorry, there's no pause button. It's live. <laughs> it's not a DVR. Uh, that's a Terry move for sure. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay, so yeah, no, no, you're, li you're, you're live. Sorry, you can't pause. You can't DVR me. <laughs> okay. Next up, uh, another, another tip. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know, the usual, turn off all notifications first, so that way your phone's not dropping down notifications constantly when someone uh, follows you on Instagram or likes a picture or whatever. And also silence other things around you. So, good morning. How are you? Silence other things around you. So, for example, I, I turned off the notifications even on my computer uh, desktop temporarily while I'm recording this video, so that won't be affected. Uh, so guys, let's show them how the hearts work. Tap the screen. Let's show YouTube how the hearts work. Tap on the screen. Thank you. So see YouTube when people like what they're seeing, even though I just made them do it when they like what they're seeing, they tap hearts and those hearts ultimately count. Now here's another tip, by the way. Uh, let's say you have someone that you, you, know, you plant someone in your audience to give you a bunch of hearts. Well, 
Now it's a limit. They can only give you 500 hearts per broadcast. You'll still keep seeing them. You know, in other words, if they type 600 or tap 600 times, you'll see the 600 hearts flow on the screen, but only 500 will count towards your broadcast. The other tip uh, right now is that uh, I'm broadcasting in landscape because that's the way to go. I love landscape video. If you rotate your phone while you're broadcasting, it kind of works. In other words, it will try to rotate, but it usually ends up freaking out half the people that are watching because their phone doesn't rotate properly. And then they try and rotate and then you're sideways because it didn't rotate properly. And then you end up having to, um, uh, they have to jump out of your broadcast and jump back in to get it to line up properly. So, by the way, how many of you guys type a one if this has ever happened or type a two if it hasn't? Type a one if you've ever joined someone's broadcast and the broadcast was so full that you couldn't comment. It said broadcast full, no comments. So if that's ever happened to you, type a one. Okay? Happens all the time, especially on those heavy-duty broadcasters or they're broadcasting something super cool that hundreds of people start trying to watch. Well, here's a tip. And again, I got to give credit to Scott on this one, Scott Williams. Uh, I didn't know this, but as you know, Periscope is, is full of um, people that are watching broadcasts and they're coming and leaving. So you might start off with 50 people watching or those broadcasts start off with 200 people watching. And, um, and of course, not all 200 people are going to stick around the entire broadcast. So some are going to drop off. Well, when those original people jumped on and filled up the broadcast and then they start dropping off, that's opening up slots for comments. So if you, if you, if you jump in right away and, oh, I can't comment and I want to, leave the broadcast, go right back in. Oh, I still can't. Leave the broadcast, go right back in. Oh, I still can't. Leave the broadcast, go right back in. Now I can't. So usually by the second to fifth time jumping out and jumping in, you will grab a slot for someone that left, and you can now start commenting. It happened yesterday. I was watching the broadcast um, by Scott Belsky. It was completely full. I jumped out and jumped in five times. Fifth time, I was able to make comments because, it, and it's just literally tap the X, come back in, tap the X, come back in, tap the X, come back in, and you'll grab a slot uh, that someone has left, and you will now be able to comment. So that's another tip for Periscopers that want to comment, but you got in too late and it looks like it's full. Well, it won't be full forever, so you can just keep jumping out and jumping back in very quickly and you will uh, grab someone's slot. And I've never had it take more than five times. Sometimes it happens the second time, like I jump out, jump right back in, and now I can comment. Uh, another, let's see if I have another uh, Periscope tip before we end the broadcast, because I don't want this YouTube video to be an hour long. So let's do one more. How about um, if you want to get a broadcaster's attention, one, you know, of course you can type in comments. But if you type in your comment, like you say, hey, at Terry L. White, it shows up on my screen bold with the reply arrow. In other words, I will, because it's, it's like you're replying to me directly and it shows up bolder than all the other comments. So a lot of times that will grab more attention uh, than and all you have to do is tap to comment to erase comment. Okay. And yep. So yeah. Uh, so I saw that. Hey, at Terry White. That's why I paused to see it. It worked. Uh, typically that will draw more attention to you as the broadcaster. Also as a tip, if I want to uh, view a person's profile. I can tap, view the person's profile, and then follow them. And that's also how you block. So I just showed, um, I just showed uh, <laughs> YouTube how to block someone. So Ajna, I'm not going to block you, but I'm going to tap on your comment. And so that's Ajna. You guys can follow her. And if I now, I can view her profile and follow her, which I already am, or I could block her. And that's how you get rid of someone who's annoying. Yes, it worked. I see. I see your last test. Uh, it'll block someone who's annoying you in your broadcast. No, I'm not going to block you. Don't worry. Uh, don't block me either. 
I will try not to say annoying things anymore. All right, so with that said, uh, thanks guys for joining me. Yes, follow, oh yeah, see all those little uh, replies. That they're coming up with the little arrows now. Those are very cool. I see those, thank you. Yes, that's uh, very cool. So thank you guys for being a part of my YouTube video. Um, everyone on YouTube, follow all those handles that you just saw. These are cool people. These are the ones that you want to follow on Periscope. Uh, hey, Don Cagle, how's it going? So follow, you know, hey guys, give shout outs if you want to be followed by the people on YouTube watching this video, and hopefully that'll be thousands of people. And uh, so uh, two more tips before we end. I know it sounds funny, but people are following you, so you assume they know who you are. But the last thing uh, that we need to talk about is sometimes people will just find you on the map and not know who you are. They just saw your title and saw something interesting. By the way, it's Terry L. White. But thank you. Um, always, and, and I, did, I didn't do it today, but always introduce yourself. In other words, hey, this is Terry White from blah, 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 broadcasting live from Atlanta. Uh, that way, people that don't normally follow you kind of know who you are. You can even give a short description of who you are and what the broadcast is going to be about for people that actually didn't read. The next one is... Have a standard closing, and my standard closing for people that are always watch my broadcast or watch my videos is, hey everybody, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. So with that, I'm going to swipe down now and stop the broadcast. Okay, so YouTube, you saw how Periscope works live. Now when I stop the broadcast and I swipe up, you'll get stats on how many viewers you had, the duration of your broadcast, so that was 20 minutes. Uh, I had 194 live viewers, by the way, and that 194 is people that came in at some point, maybe they stayed the whole time, maybe they only stayed in for 30 seconds, but they came in, so it's 194. Now, there's a little bit of a bug in this update because normally to the right of that, it will show how many hearts you got live, and that's broken in this update, but hopefully that'll be restored um, by the time you watch this. Um, so far, no replay viewers yet because it just happened. So you'll start to see the number of replay viewers as they start watching the replay and that um, the, you will see the hearts for the replay because that's not broken in this update. And you'll also see that there were, in this case, 79 people watched on the web. So that was people watching on their web browser, not on a mobile device. Uh, or maybe they were watching on a mobile device in a web browser, but on a web browser. So that's, in a nutshell, how Periscope works and i want to uh, take this opportunity um to thank you guys for watching now one last kind of tip just in general and i need to adjust the tightness of this there we go but one last tip in general is that you notice i wasn't holding the phone now when you're out live yeah you'll be holding your phone in your hand and you'll be doing your best to keep it steady but when you're in a situated environment like an office, a desk, or even out for, uh, doing photography, you can mount your phone on a tripod. I'm using what's called, and I'll show a picture of it here, the TW Broadcaster, which I can mount two devices or one device. And this is by Archon, Archon Mounts. So Archon makes these mounts. They're fantastic for holding your phone in your car, on your desk or on a tripod, or even in your hand, uh, to steady your device while you're doing these live broadcasts. Because everyone hates shaky video. So uh, use Archon mounts, the TW Broadcaster can be mounted on a tripod, handheld, a desk mount, and there's all kinds of mounts for it. Um, but whatever you use, just use something that's gonna steady your device for longer periods of time. So with that said, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.